Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel where today we are doing a full length, mostly non spoilery review of Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey, the first book in the Expanse series. So it's mostly non spoilery, but there will be a spoiler section kind of in the middle as I'm talking about the characters. It'll be really well marked, and if you want to skip it, there will be timestamps linked down below. But the Expanse series is an adult science fiction series, and in this particular book, Leviathan Wakes, it's dual perspective and we follow two main characters. So the first one is Jim Holden and he is an EXO on a spaceship and he um, responds to a distress call and in doing so finds out a secret that he kind of wishes he didn't know and is also really way bigger than him. The other perspective is Detective Miller and he has been given a case to track down a missing girl and it gets really complicated really fast. These two perspectives do end up intertwining and everything is so much bigger than anybody ever knew. And the story goes from there. So content warnings, there is alcoholism, there is suicidal ideation, as well as an attempted suicide. I say attempted just because we don't know whether it was successful or not. Um, it is not graphic or violent, but it is very definitely a big part of the story. So next let's talk about the world building. And I found the world building to be really interesting. Um, we have colonized the solar system. Like we definitely colonized Mars, I think Earth's moon as well. And the, and like other moons in the solar system as well as I think some asteroids, or maybe we're just using asteroids for mineral, mineral extraction. Not entirely certain on that one. But like the humanity has spread its wings, so to speak. Now this lends itself really in, into some really interesting things with the political situation because there's three major powerhouses. It's Earth and Mars and the Outer Belt, which is basically everybody else. And they all have different wants and needs, of course, when you're talking political stuff. But it's all very, very interesting, very juicy. And I really, really enjoyed it. Now, I mentioned in my reading vlog that there was a lot of science in this that I really didn't understand. And I'm not actually sure how much science there really is. There's a lot of scientific terminology. I will definitely give it that. And these terms aren't ever really explained. They're just there. And I'm not really sure how much of an explanation those terms actually give, if that makes sense. Um, it's, it's a little strange. I don't know how to explain this. It felt a little bit like window dressing to me, honestly, to have these scientific terms, but no true explanation that anybody could understand. I don't know. Um, it's the one thing I will say um, is that if you don't understand it and you just kind of trust that it all works, that it makes sense, you will 100% still understand everything in this story. You don't need to understand the science. And so I do appreciate that even as I'm a little, I get, I, I kind of side eye a little bit. It's like, okay, if you're going to have the terminology, maybe you should have the explanations too, but okay, whatever. As long as it's not hindering my enjoyment of the story, I'll give you a pass. And that's what I found is that you didn't actually need to fully understand the terms to be able to um, still enjoy the story. So let's talk about the plot. And this, I think, is the strongest point, like the strongest um, thing in this book is the plot. It is so interesting. It's a very multi-layered plot where we're, we're pulling back the layers as we go and we keep diving deeper into this mystery. And it's, it's like every time you think you solve one thing, something else crops up that's really weird. And why is that happening? And I think that it was just done in a really interesting kind of manner. Now, because we are, it is more of a layer, peel back the layers kind of plot, it does slow it down a bit. And I found that I didn't really mind that actually, because it was so interesting. Um, and it just pulled me right along from the story, from the beginning of the story all the way till the end and honestly, even beyond. So I do think that it was really well done. Now, I do think that there was one thing that stood out to me with the plot that I thought was a little strange. And that is that there was nobody that was like scientifically curious about it. And that by that, I mean like Holden and Miller were interested in what's happening and understanding what's happening from the perspective of I need to protect my people. But there was nobody that was just like, 
what is happening and why and how just because they want to know, right? Like they all had reasons. Like they, it was self-preservation kind of reasons. And I was like, that's weird. <laughs> I'm, and it might be just because I'm surrounded by people who are curious in that kind of way that I, I just found it a little strange that there really wasn't any characters like this. Um, and I do think it was a little bit of a missed opportunity because it could have really helped flesh out some of these characters. Um, but the thing that I actively had a problem with was actually a point at the end where Holden needed to make a choice on whether to trust Miller or not. And we just didn't get enough scenes and in information from the plot for Holden's decision to make sense. And it's like, it is, it doesn't even matter what his choice, Holden's choice was because we didn't have enough information for either way, whether he trusted him or not. Like there just wasn't enough information. And it's a big deal because the whole, like the rest of the plot follows from this decision. It's a linchpin. And so everything up until this point in the plot is really intriguing, really interesting. We have this decision, which like from the reader's perspective, I don't think we have enough information to really follow why Holden makes the decision he does. And then we have the ending, which logically follows. Like the ending is actually really nice and logically follows from Holden's decision. So I really have a problem with that decision because it just, as a reader, I was like, this, we didn't, the plot doesn't support this, <laughs> like having this decision. Um, and I do think that's probably the weakest part, but honestly, like, I just kind of, I rolled my eyes at it, at it and just moved on and was like, okay. Um, but I do think it is probably the weakest part. Still really liked the plot though, other than that. Um, but it's like that particular plot point was really reliant upon us understanding the characters, which leads me to my next section, characters. And this is in fact, I think the weakest point of this book that the characters honestly are so bland. We just don't really know much about them other than like what's necessary for the story. And they all kind of fall into these stereotypes, honestly. And it's like, um, so we have our main characters of Miller and Holden and they are probably the most well-developed and everybody else is just kind of there. Now I went into this knowing that the female characters were not particularly well developed and I do agree with that and they do fall into pretty like stereotypical roles but at the same time like nobody's really well developed so I don't I'm like again I side eye it a little bit but I'm like okay but nobody got de none of the characters got developed enough so like really how can I expect the females to be awesome right um, I did like Holden the best out of all the characters and I did actively like him. However, I found him to be a very typical male character. He's that guy that's like, you know, I'm righteous and trying to do the best that I can. And then sometimes I make mistakes and I feel really sad about it and try to fix it. But like, I'm not perfect. And also I secretly lust after my female coworker because ugh. anyway, but, um, so very, very typical, right? There was nothing about him that I found to be break the mold and make him original or interesting. I still liked him. I just, he was, he wasn't anything special, which leads me to Miller. Now, before we get into spoilers, I will say non-spoilery that I had problems with Miller's, um, character arc that are very personal problems. I just didn't like it. Um, and then I did think that we, his characterization was ambiguous at best and in some ways conflicting. And that's why I had so many problems with Holden's choice of whether he needed, he could trust Miller or not. It's because we didn't have enough information about whether we could trust Miller or not. So that's my non-spoiler way of saying it. We're going to jump into spoilers. Again, if you want to skip this section, timestamp linked down below, but Let's just jump right in. So his character arc is a kind of variation on a descent into madness kind of thing. Um, he, at the beginning, he very much imagines people like it's his ex-wife at the beginning. Um, and more and more the imagination, imagined person becomes more and more real to him. 
and it kind of flirts between that line of is he imagining things or is he hallucinating things now as having read the whole thing i don't think he ever crossed the line into true hallucination but it's definitely it's it's kind of that thing that walks the line and he has mental health issues and this is likely a, a part of this his symptoms um and I just honestly didn't like it. Like, I don't like watching the downhill slide of a character. That's just not really my thing. If you don't mind that, this might actually be a really great character. I don't know. Um, but I had a lot of issue with it. Now, one thing I will say to the author's credit is that they did not fall into the stereotype of because he has mental health issues, he's inherently untrustworthy. And that is a huge thing because that is a stereotype that frequently comes up and is just so wrong and very detrimental to people who have mental health issues. Like even people who are hallucinating things are not inherently untrustworthy and to have that put out there is very harmful. So I'm very glad that they avoided that. Um, and I, um, I do appreciate that they stayed away from this. Um, but to get into the messy characterization. So our thing is that Miller, when we first meet Miller, it seems like he's a really solid detective. And then we pretty quickly find out that actually he's like the has-been of the police station. He used to be a great detective and now he's just not. And not even in a way like, oh, he used to be the best and now he's among the masses. No, he's like low man on the totem pole kind of has been like he gets the crap partners low man on the totem pole kind of has been and so um so we're kind of left wondering like is he a good detective or not and like after I, I, like when he he leaves the police station to go do his own own investigation stuff we see like some clues that he might actually be a good detective but we're never given enough information to really say one way or another. And that's the thing that Holden is trying to decide. It's not just, do I trust Miller? Do I trust Miller's instincts to be able to size up a situation accurately, to take in all those clues and come to an accurate conclusion? And he has to make this choice. And we have not been given enough information to know whether Miller is a good detective or not. Whether this like, his time in the police station was a fluke or whether he still sucks as a detective. Like we don't really know. And I found that to be really sloppy characterization because it really wouldn't have taken much. Like if you wanted to say that, yes, he's inherently a good detective, you could be, you could explain away why he, maybe he wasn't as good when he was attached to the police station. And there's so many ways you could have done that. If he's not a good detective, like you could have shown him making more mistakes so it's much more of a thing like you can't always trust his instincts and we didn't get any of that and so that's part of why I had such a big problem with this this big plot point that hinged upon do we trust Miller's instinct or not is because we as readers I don't think got enough to really be able to trust trust what the decision that Hol Holden made Again, whether he made whatever choice he made, it doesn't hold up. And so I don't, I really, like I said, I just think that that's kind of sloppy. Um, and this is also part of why I think that the characters really are the weakest part of this book. So <laughs> let's go ahead and move on. Um, so let's talk about pacing and writing style. Um, so, uh, like I said, with the writing style, I do think it's mostly easy to understand. There are scientific terms. Don't get, if you don't get like held up on them, it's still pretty easy to understand. Um, I, I, like I said, I don't know how much of a science explanation there is with using those terms. I don't really understand the science part of this. It's very strange. Um, generally speaking, like I said, the overarching plot does move pretty slow, just the nature of it. But it also moves a little bit slow because there's like unnecessary repetitive descriptions. Like it's the kind of thing where you like, you're like the character was walking down a beige hall and they turned a corner and there was another beige hall. And like, you don't actually need to say that they're both beige for the most part. We assume that it's just unnecessary repetition. And it was that kind of thing where it was just like, 
well, I kind of assumed. <laughs> I didn't need for you to confirm it for me. And that kind of description actually, I think, did slow it down even further, which was weird because like contrasting it with the action scenes, the action scenes are really fast paced and you just fly through them. Um, now, again, slightly odd, like the, the action scenes are fast paced, you fly through them, but they don't actually move the plot forward very much, the overarching plot forward very much. So overall, I just kind of think that this is, oh, there's a lot happening. There's so much happening, but overall, I kind of felt like it was a bit slow. Again, um, it didn't wholly bother me, but it is definitely slower than I normally like. So in the end, I ended up giving this book 3.75 stars. So I really liked the plot. Um, like I said, I really, really liked the plot. I am very interested to see what happens next with the plot, but everything else was, we had enough issues that I didn't feel comfortable giving it a full four stars. Um, but that's it. You guys leave me comments down below. If you have read this, let me know your thoughts and feelings about it. I am very interested because I feel like most people like this book a lot more than I did. And I am interested to see if you agree or disagree with my assessment. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. But that's all I got. So until next time, have happy reading and I will see you in the next video. Bye.